Good evening. Welcome to our live stream service tonight with Worship and the Word. Thank you for joining us. We have a wonderful worship team tonight. We have Kim visiting us from Washington, and she will join David and Ruth and Gary and Cosette as we lead in worship in just a few moments. Before we do, let's pray and give this evening to the Lord. I don't know what burdens you have on your heart, but tonight as we pray and as we minister the word and worship together, I just pray that the Lord will bring relief, that he will visit you with his presence and your load will be lighter because of this evening. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for your love and care over our lives. We are aware of your great love for us and we are so grateful for it. We pray for those that are in need tonight, those that are ill, those that are in the hospital, those that are believing you for miracles. We join our faith with theirs tonight, Lord, and ask you to do what you alone can do. Prepare our hearts to worship, Lord, and as we praise you, may you be glorified and honored. We dedicate this time to you, in Jesus' name, amen. Join us in worship, sing along, and allow the Lord to minister to you as we do. There is no one like our God. 
don't you love him tonight? As they sang those words, I just thought, oh God, how good you are. How wonderful that you shed your love upon us by sending your son to die for us. Well, tonight, Lord willing, we conclude our study of rebuilding our lives with the study of the book of Nehemiah. Tonight, I want to talk to you about facing tomorrow with joy. Take a deep breath for a moment. You might wonder, how can we face tomorrow with joy when all that's going on around us seems to state otherwise? Let's take a moment. Touch a solid object near you. And now answer, what's more significant, this object or the breath of life within me? Of course, it's the breath of life within us, isn't it? And where does that breath of life draw its power to sustain? Where does all of life find its source and its power? From the breath of God, which is infused with his word. The word which he speaks to create and support and redeem and sustain us. We must develop a sensitivity to the truth. That God's voice, his word, will breathe into us as the essence of his very being and of our becoming like him. God's word is more than words in a book that we call the Bible. Eternity is written in its very fabric. It is the very word of God, the life force inherent in that book that exceeds all time and space. Mark 13, 31 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. I've loved reading that scripture in times of need and it seemed like so many things were shifting around me. And I would say, oh, but God, your word never passes away. Allow the truth of that to engrave itself on your soul. Those words contain the deepest point of understanding that any human can ever gain. Life becomes durable and fulfilling in direct proportion to the degree that the word of God becomes alive in us, bringing healing and creative power. The Word of God is the source of all substance, the source of all life. Genesis 1-1, you know it well, says, In the beginning God created, and He did it with the power of His Word. He said it, and it was. And then in John 1-1, John wrote, In the beginning was the Word. Christ was there at creation. And that brings us to an eternal truth. All that is and shall be flows to man by Jesus Christ through the word of God. Let me read that again. It's such a powerful truth. All that is and shall be flows to man by Jesus Christ through the word of God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And so we go to Nehemiah chapter 8 for our final point of study tonight. It's a story of a people who were who were rediscovering the Word of God, misunderstanding it, responding to it backwards, and then helped by Nehemiah to understand God's intended response for His Word. This is more than just the reading of the Word. It's allowing the very spirit of it to fill and refill us continually. It's the only way to keep us rebuilt constantly and growing. The Word of God is not simply words or information or black print on white pages. It's eternal, durable, life-giving, healing, protecting, and invincible. It will last. It's an anchor for the soul. Last night, late, I was talking to a young man in the hospital. He was despondent, and he said, Pastor, I'm losing it. And I was so glad that I could bring him to the Word of God as an anchor that he could tie to and know that he could make it because of the word. Second Peter 1, 4, and 8 capture its power. It says, here in his word, God has given us great and precious promises. And if their real meaning is at work in you, there is no way you'll ever be less than filled with life and fruitful living. Before the dedication of the completed walls, Nehemiah asked Ezra the priest, to present the Word of God to the people. It was a two-day event with a high platform built so that the readers and teachers could be seen by everyone. And because we each have one or more copies of the Bible in our home, it's hard for us to imagine 
how precious this word was to the people. They were living long before the printing press and scrolls were very rare in those days. But they responded so powerfully to the preciousness of the word, even as Ezra came to unroll the scroll and read it to them. They worshipped, gave thanks, lifted their hands in praise, and literally stood there for hours just to hear God's word. The whole scene was one of gratitude and reverence for the word of God. It was a thrilling day as they understood what was being spoken to them. But then their joy turned to mournful weeping. As they heard the word, they were overwhelmed by guilt and their inability to live it. And then Nehemiah and Ezra said, don't weep, this is a holy day. In Nehemiah 8.10, they said, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to the Lord. It was like a party in God's honor as they started that day and progressed into a full-scale, week-long observance of the Feast of Tabernacles. This picture reveals God's heart toward the way we should receive God's word. The unfolding of scripture should always bring us joy. In chapter 9, we see that their celebration was followed by confession of sin, fasting, and repentance. God wants our first response to his word to be one of joyous hope, as well as repenting in deep contrition. There's an element of promise inherent in the word of God. When I know that my life doesn't measure up to it, I can choose to obey it, and then I can be begin by rejoicing in its truth. I can rejoice that the same word that rebukes me also releases me. The book that guides me will also feed my soul with a dynamic for living. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says, Faithful is he who calls you, who also will do it. When God gives us an assignment, he enables us by his word. Luke 1.37 says, For no word of God is without power. With God, nothing is impossible. Amen. With every word God speaks is the power to activate it. And that is why Paul could write in Philippians 2.13, It is God who works in you, both to will and do of his good pleasure. God's word builds repentance on the foundation of faith and decisive commitment rather than guilt or emotion. And Paul commended the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 7, verses 10 and 11, said, For godly sorrow produces repentance to salvation, not to be regretted, though the sorrow of the world produces death. For observe this very thing, that you sorrowed in a godly manner. What diligence it provided, produced in you, what clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication. In all things you proved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Godly repentance is shown in Nehemiah chapter 9, following the day of feasting and rejoicing instructed by their leaders, and it verifies that a joyous response to God's word is not adverse to the repentant spirit, but rather is complementary to it. In his parable of the sower in Matthew 13, Jesus spoke of people receiving the word with gladness. So depth and joy can go together. Philip preached in Samaria, and it resulted in the whole city being filled with great joy. And this is not surprising because the gospel is good news. And joy is the only response that is needed. Lord, what should be the atmosphere when we worship you and your word is faithfully preached, the pastor asked. God led him to Isaiah 40, verses 1 and 2, which says, Comfort, yes, comfort my people. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her. Your warfare is ended. God wants his people to be happy in his presence. There's a continual call in the book of Psalms to praise and rejoice before the Lord. Psalm 1611 says, In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. In Philippians 4.4, 4, Paul insists that the Philippians rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. If we are happy in God's presence, it makes him happy too. Joy in his presence builds faith and commitment. 
which causes us to grow in our service to each other and to the Lord. My heart has been heavy today for needs that have come and calls that have been brought to our attention, the needs that needed prayer so desperately. But tonight as we were praising and worshiping, I felt the load of heaviness lift a bit as I realized there's such joy in his presence and that praising him brings such a, a strengthening of our faith and a commitment to believe that our God can do what he's promised to do. Not only our worship services should be times of celebration and worship in the word, but our hearts and our homes should flourish also in the light of God's love and joy. Ezra and Nehemiah were seeing this lived out in their day with the Jews in Jerusalem as they received the word of God with joy. They knew and were reminding the people of the truth of Nehemiah 8.10. And I love this verse, the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you know the Lord, you know that when your heart is joyful, you feel very strong in the Lord. And that is as it should be. Joy is at the heart of the message that announced Christ's birth. The angel said, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy that shall be unto all people, for unto you this day is born a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The news was good. I bring you good tidings. The joy was great. Tidings of great joy. And the time was now. This day a Savior is born. Let's face all of our tomorrows with the word of God in our hands and the joy of the Lord in our hearts. As we read his word, his joy will be our strength. His word will work in us to accomplish our Father's good pleasure, and we can rejoice in that. Centuries ago, a band of battered people stood facing the embarrassing evidence of their inability to recover the ruins of their life. Then a man came with marvelous tenderness, abundant supply, and patient endurance he taught them to pray and resist enemy attack, and he helped them complete their goals. Then one day, he led them to the full counsel of God's word. As they discovered their deficiencies, they mourned and wept. But this man rose up and said, this is a holy day. Do not mourn, but rejoice, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And today, that man is the Holy Spirit in our lives. He is in their story as well as he is in ours to lead us into the fulfillment of the Father's highest destiny for our lives and the realization of his purpose and promise. We will find his promises in his word. And if you will allow the Holy Spirit to teach you, he will help you receive his word with faith and hope and obedience and joy. And you can live every day assured of his word triumphing in you. Isn't that a joyous mm -hmm. thought? What a wonderful offer God has made to his beloved children. And to you that are listening tonight, I ask you, do you know him? Have you received him as your savior? You can. He invites you. He says, come just as you are. Whatever you've tried to fix in the past and failed, he can help you. He can redeem what the enemy has sought to kill, steal, and destroy from you. So I urge you to come tonight as we pray. Allow the Lord to transform you and fill your heart with his love, joy, and peace. You will never be the same, and you will never regret that decision. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the precious promises of your word. We are thrilled every time we read them as we realize they literally are our very breath and life. Thank you for your life that is breathed into them and that every promise in the book is ours and is true. You have never failed in keeping one of your promises, and we rejoice in that truth tonight. Lord, we have sung of your great love for us, and tonight I come with that one that's receiving you for the first time. May they open their hearts and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need you so desperately. Would you come into my heart and forgive my sin and live there by your Holy Spirit? Help me to be what you planned my life to be. Help me to live for you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to know that God received you as his beloved child. If we can be a blessing to you, let us know. We would love to serve you any way that we can. Thank you for joining us tonight and for your love and your prayers and for your faithful support of this ministry. We are so grateful. 
Remember our other services. On Friday at 10, we have a community distribution of food. You are welcome to come. God has blessed us abundantly, and we have much to share with anyone in need. And then at 7 o'clock, our youth and young adults meet at Southport at the church, 142 East 16th Street in National City. And we invite you to join us on Saturday at 10. We serve a box lunch for anyone who's hungry. If that's you, come and join us at the church at 10 o'clock on Saturday. And then Sunday mornings at 1030, we enjoy an in-person live worship service with worship and the word. You will be so blessed as you come. It's also on live stream, but we would love to see you in person. If you haven't been coming, we urge you to join us. If you're faithful to be there, we'll see you on Sunday. Our men are going to share this Sunday with Brother Sal their experiences at men's camp, and you will be blessed as you hear what God did for them. Then on Monday nights, our family meets for prayer, and we invite you to do the same thing. God hears and answers prayer, and we believe that. Then on Tuesday, our ladies meet with Ruth at 1030 for a wonderful time of Bible study. The Holy Spirit is present. People are receiving the Spirit. Sick bodies are being healed, and it's wonderful to see what God's doing on that day. And then next Wednesday at 10, we again serve food at the church. And at 6 p.m., Brother Sal meets with his men on a Zoom meeting. And at 7 o'clock, we come to you with a live stream of Worship in the Word. Next Wednesday, we will begin a new study, and we look forward to sharing that time with you. This week, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Amen. God bless you.